Joining us right now to talk economics and markets, former defense and economic minister under German Chancellor Angela Merkel, KT Zu Gutenberg. KT, good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. First, let's talk about the global story here, right. economics. How, how would you characterize what's going on in Germany right now? Well, in Germany, we are, we've just reshaped the government. It took us half a year, which the uh, good news is we are finally there, but, um, but we're just starting to get into motion. It's, um, and Germany's voice has to newly establish itself. It's, it's, it's been a while now until we've been actually giving impulses because we're so much looking inward. And, um, but looking at the wider scheme now and what is happening on the trade perspective and all the other things, there is some silver lining on the horizon right. regarding this late outreach from China say we're still negotiating I found the comment of the premier Li Keqiang quite interesting he said well um, there is enough intelligence on both sides to resolve the issue I can only hope so it's well, uh, well the EU was was exempt from the aluminum and steel tariffs and now we're all talking about for now for now okay for now yeah. so what what's your take on that well, it's still a while to go. It's, uh, we're talking about finding some kind of a resolution until until May, and we should actually step forward also from the European side, but also over here. And China comes into the game again because you cannot you cannot win the game as the U.S. alone. When it comes to China, I really I really ask for some sanity here and say, okay, let's do this thing together. Well, there is, we have shared interests on both sides. We have as Europeans and as Americans, and if we fight this quote to quote war or avoid this war together we could win much more and that could also lead to some renegotiation of something we have buried a couple of months ago which is TTIP so there is a lot of things to that could be gained and also the Europeans I think will be willing to step a little further towards Donald Trump here and to give him some more than we have actually anticipated beforehand. So there's a lot in the game here, and that doesn't work, of course, without Germany. So it's good news that Germany is back on track, but we need to move now. That's why I argued that the way that this administration started tackling our trade deficit with a, a variety of different right. trading partners seemed to be disorganized, haphazard, because you go after steel and aluminum, and you make, at least initially, seem an enemy out of the European Union and and our allies rather than if you really want to take on China right. you, you go to, to them you lock arms and exactly. say we're not allowing China yes. to steal our intellectual property anymore we're not we're going to force collectively China to give on its demands for technology right. from and if you think businesses. a little further then it's you get something back you probably wouldn't have gotten so if, if, if some if you align on these topics you finally may get some European movement on cars on pharmaceuticals on food issues and all the other things and these things play into the constituencies of Donald Trump so but that would have been way. a whole very surgical targeted attack against China and maybe that's what he was trying to avoid I mean, when you look at all of the trade deficits it's a deficit with everybody 800 billion dollars I mean 375 billion comes from China deficit but Germany 70 billion deficit with, right. with with the United States so I mean if you were to just lock arms with everybody and go against China I don't know how that would have been perceived well, not a trade uh, deficit with Canada despite the crunch of the numbers out of the White House it's a goods deficit but not a services deficit we actually have a trade surplus with Canada right and again but at least initially when those steel and aluminum tariffs were announced it's there were you know it was maybe we give China and I mean Canada and Mexico a, a pass on them but that that's the point is it just seemed like again it was like the travel ban it just seemed to be disorganized and real ham-handed that's, of, that's the point the it remains to be unpredictable and that's that's the game China's playing right now as well they say that for us the best thing that could happen is to divide the so-called West mm. and that's taking place right now it's actually also Putin's strategy to a certain extent mm. so I was gonna ask that actually how do you think this plays into the, the economic conflicts we're having with our partners how is that going to affect our foreign policy when it comes to dealing with stuff, stuff like Putin uh, I mean this is obviously the first time we saw this uh, coordinated expulsion of right. Russia. Well the less aligned we are on economic and trade issues the harder it is to find common grounds also on these topics and and yes we have seen some kind of a good signal yesterday that the former West somehow was united that at least is the headline 
are we really united? Hmm. So a couple of European countries still opted out. It's, uh, that's one of the things you only read in footnotes currently. It's not the whole European Union that is expelling diplomats. It's Greece is not playing the game, Cyprus is not playing the game. Of course, you can somehow forget Malta in this context, <laughs> but it is a European member state. So there is not entire unity here. And again, that plays into the hands of those who love to divide us as far as they can. And, 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 and when it comes to the question you've just raised, geostrategic and, 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 and all the foreign policy issues, I think we are most, um, we, we are most efficient if we stick together. So even though all some countries did opt out, it still sent a strong message that so mm. many nations did expel these Russian diplomats. But how can we expect Russia's behaviors to change if they're not actually being punished? We kick out their diplomats, they kick out our diplomats, so what? How do we actually expect them to change? Well, it's, it's a signal they didn't expect that magnitude. So that's something, I think that's a sign Putin will somehow read correctly. But having said that, it's definitely not enough. You have to target those who are who can put pressure on Putin and this is not a lot of people but there are some people and there have been already sanctions towards the oligarchs towards those who are the only ones who could actually push Putin into some kind of direction which is hard with an autocrat or a dictator anyway yeah. but they, but that's something where we also need to again join forces mm. and 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 it's not only about it's not only about expelling a couple of diplomats right. we'll see a kind of reaction from the Russian side here we have to be more painful yes 60, 60 diplomats expelled and now Ireland is the latest just expelling one we're, we're getting this news this morning